May God be with you. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Many of you already saying good morning to one another in the comments of our Facebook live stream. We know there's several of you joining us by phone. Welcome to you as well um, on this beautiful summer morning. We're glad that you made space for this community and for God's grace proclaimed here. 
This is a Sunday of yeses and noes. So let me tell you about some of the yeses and noes. First, the noes. There is no Pastor Beth. She is on her second straight week of vacation, and we just celebrate that for her getting rest and spending time with family. There's also no Angela Gritton this morning, um, uh, capable leadership within our music team, um, leading us in songs of praise. Um, there are, and now some of the yeses, yes to masks at church. Uh, you'll notice one around my neck as I am leading worship this morning. Uh, when we are leading worship, we will take the masks off, but for all other times, uh, we will have the masks covering our, faith, our face. It's a good way to keep one another safe, a good way to uh, love our neighbor in this time. It's also the law, and we are complying. So for if, if for any reason you find ourselves in, your bil or in our building, even though we are closed, um, please remember to bring your mask or use one of the ones that we have. We are also saying yes to Rich Holloway preaching. Rich, who works with uh, our youth and their families, uh, bringing uh, the gospel news this morning. Yes to communion, so get those bread uh, and wine elements ready. Yes to the gospel living in uh, our hearts and yours. And yes to baptism. We have been able to um, invite families in after worship to have their children baptized. Uh, and then we know that baptism isn't just about one person. It's not just about one biological family. It's about the whole family of God, the church. And so you'll have the opportunity to see these people being baptized. And just know, for those of you who are desiring baptism either for yourself or for your children, please email me or Pastor Beth or Angela, and we will get you scheduled. In baptism, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. By water and the word, we are made members of church, the church, the body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Last week, parents and sponsors presented Logan, Cohen, and Keegan to receive the sacrament of holy baptism and promised to help them grow in Christian faith and life. Baptism is something we as the body of Christ share together. It includes the whole community of faith at, of Mount Olivet, whether we are physically present or not. So I ask all of you, will you be active partners in Logan, Cohen, and Keegan's faith development? If so, answer, we will. We will. Let's watch together as the promises of God come to Logan, Cohen, and Keegan. Calm the cross and be surrounded by those who love and support you. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Calling you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Logan Robert Bracker, I baptize you surrounded by those who love and support you the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, there we go.
Let us join together in prayer. Gracious God, with the waters of this baptism and the commitment of all who are gathered, guide the journey that has begun at this font, strengthen families to nurture faith, and empower this community to know and celebrate Logan, Cohen, and Keegan's call in this world. Amen. And let all of us recommit to making our baptismal journeys together, letting our lives be shaped by these grace-filled waters. We rejoice in the gift of baptism as we respond to God's call to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the world. Amen. May the waters of baptism surround you with grace and empower you to follow Jesus. Amen. Let's join together in song. God of compassion, remind us of your abundance. Be with us in our times of hunger and walk alongside us as we work for justice and peace in the world. Amen. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now, when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, 
and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of our Lord. Thank you, Brian. Grace and peace to all of you in Christ. This summer is unlike any other summer we've ever lived. Most summers, I would be heading to some corner of the country with a group of middle schoolers or high schools, wondering what we will learn and experience throughout the next week. One of those trips we would have been going on this summer is to the Boundary Waters. I love taking groups there. The peace, the beauty, and the community it creates. But one aspect that can always be, that one aspect that can always be a little touch and go is the food. You count every pound, you see, and anything that you add to your packs gains weight. And so people want to know what you're bringing. <laughs> Most of the outfitters we go through bring the bare minimum, and that includes food. There is always enough, but at the end of the first day of paddling and portaging, we're all pretty hungry and skeptical that this little tiny pack of dried food is going to go the distance. Everyone is very concerned about how much others are eating. How much are they carrying? Do you have enough food? Have you carried enough? Many times, scarcity takes over on the first day. It can be a strain for a little community. We find ourselves this summer in a place where scarcity is the reality of our country. Unemployment is at historic levels. Moratoriums on evictions around the country are ending this month. COVID-19 is legion in our communities. We are facing a racial reckoning that is long overdue in our country. There's a deep hunger in our communities, both literally and figuratively. And today, we hear of Jesus feeding 5,000, 5,000 plus people with five loaves of bread and two fish. Women and children were not counted, a seemingly timely reminder that inequality has been pervasive for thousands of years. It's a miracle to be sure, but one that has me asking about the deep hunger of today and if such miracles exist in 2020. I see myself resonating with the disciples first. Their skepticism and scarcity mindset I feel every day in my body this year. They say, we have nothing here. An admission that is seemingly rooted in truth, they are tired, in the wilderness, and probably not excited with the prospect of sharing their meager supper with 5,000 plus people. Does everyone get a scrap of food? What good does that do? But Jesus is confused by them asking to send the crowds away. Why would they leave when the disciples have food? Do we thoughtlessly send people away when we think our abilities and resources aren't enough to have an impact? I'm sure I do. The disciples say we have nothing here. But they are proven wrong by Jesus. They have what they need. They feed thousands with what they have. 
The previous months have tried to convince me that I don't have enough. That the weight of the world around me is crushing, exhausting, and ultimately too much for all of us to even show up in. The disciples want to send them away. I understand this sentiment. There are days where I want to send it all away. Cancel everything, don't show up. Even simple tasks seem more challenging at the moment. But Jesus shows the disciples that they have what they need. The table has been set for them. Jesus is not concerned with their perceived limitations. Jesus, like the disciples, I find my, or just like the disciples, I find myself forgetting the divine law of community. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer reminds us, so long as we eat our bread together, we shall have sufficient even with the least. Not until one person desires to keep their own bread for themselves does hunger ensue. This is a strange divine law. This is 2020. Sharing meals together is on hold. The great crowds we hear about in the story are a thing of the past. But just like the disciples, Jesus asks all of us to reimagine our possibilities. Where is the hunger of the world? Hunger and nourishment are bodily experiences. I encourage you to feel how you hold this time in your body. Listen to it. If we recognize hunger in our bodies, how can that be a call to action? And remember that hunger isn't the, isn't the cause of scarcity. It's the signaling. The hunger of, a tent, of the tent cities that have popped up all over the parks in Minneapolis and beyond signal a broken housing system in our country. The hunger of black bodies demanding equal treatment under the law signal a system of white supremacy that is foundational to American culture. Sitting in this text this week, I realized that it was harder for me to relate to the crowd. My privilege draws me towards the disciples who have resources, power, and a way to escape the realities of injustice. But I need to hear what Jesus is doing in these moments. People are, people are showing up in mass after the murder of a beloved community member. John the Baptist has just been beheaded by the state. They're out of their homes, on the street, maybe because they don't know what else to do. Maybe because great injustice, injustices injure the soul of all who witness, and they heard of a man who heals. Jesus' first sense is compassion. The disciples eventually want to send them all away. The disciples miss the point here a little bit for the crowds. They feel apart from the community. They miss that when injustice shakes people to the core, the only option is to name it in community for the evil it is and work to dismantle it. If they don't, if they send people away, they continue the system that Jesus is actively ripping to pieces throughout the whole gospel. If they don't engage in that work, they will slowly starve. Those five loaves and two fish are, they are clinging to will become smaller and smaller until their hunger overtakes them. This work is core and central to what it means to be a Christian. If not this, then what? You may feel that your five loaves of bread and two fish are inadequate to fight the, system, the, the systemic injustices. They feel like scraps compared to the enormous task that faces us. Remember that Jesus calls this false. The opposite of hunger is abundance, and we have a God of abundance. As Pastor Beth has said before when we dwelled on this text as a staff, some days you just have to believe in a God of miracles. And we've seen it before. Here, at Mount Olivet, we prioritized feeding our community before the pandemic and now have the ability to help feed hundreds of people a week during one of the worst economic downturns in our nation's history. That's a miracle. Name it. Now, what can we continue to do? 
Jesus demands us to imagine new possibilities to address the hunger that surrounds us and binds us together. The good news is that we can set aside our fear of that demand because he has also promised healing and nourishment abundantly. This summer, I miss those trips with the youth. One of the biggest lessons of those Boundary Waters trips is that the only way to keep going is together. If we don't work for the good of the all in the group, we will fail. You learn this pretty quickly out there. And it's something I hope that youth take home with them afterwards. Jesus puts all of us to, Jesus points all of us to the directions of the crowd, to the courage of the least of us, and calls us to join the collective in whatever way we are able. We've been given bread for the journey. The journey may seem long and arduous, that's fair. But Jesus releases us from the obsession with our own limitations. Maybe I can let go of my hold on this idea that we have nothing here. Maybe it's time to look at what I've been given today in this pandemic to help in the fight against the systems of oppression that Jesus spent his whole ministry dismantling. Here in the gospel today, we see hunger. I know many of us feel that same hunger in our own lives right now, but we also witness a miracle in this reading, one that fills all who are there. The hope I find in in this message is that Jesus points us towards the courage and radical faith of the crowds. The hope I find is Jesus reminding us that the only way forward is together, that if we remember the truth, that when one of us is hungry, we all are. But when we remember it, then we can be working toward a more healthy and just society. The late Congressman John Lewis wrote in an essay to be published after his death, though I may not be here with you, I urge you to answer the highest calling of your heart and stand up for what you truly believe. For those of us of racial privilege, we are not white saviors, but everyone has something to share in the work for justice in the world. And the world is hungry. Amen. Let's go.
Together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Each week, we share a story of something that we are grateful for, something that God is making possible, something that we cannot make possible on our own. And today, very fitting with the story and the sermon, we are um, a farm-to-table restaurant officially here with loaves and fishes. Rich talked about each one of us having a role to play in the feeding of this world that is hungry in so many ways. And we have some people who have figured out it is their role to tend the earth at Mount Olivet in our garden and to trust um, in the process of the seeds that they have planted. And so this past Monday, for the first time uh, this season, we were able to serve a bunch of produce, green beans um, from our church garden um, to the um, 150, 160, 160, 170 people who came by last week. Um, and we're fed. And you think about each one of us has a role in meeting the needs of this world. Each one of us has something to share and something to receive. And it's not just human, it's the earth too. And so when we ask, where are we meant to connect and share? Um, God turns uh, or opens surprising doors, including using a patch of grass to grow food that is now feeding hungry folks in our community. So for this and for all the volunteers, for uh, the Jerpies, for Barry Froseth, for Mark Schmidt, um, for all other community gardeners who are tending to this role, we give God thanks and praise. We'll now do uh, three things at once. We will listen to the band offer a gift of music to us, and we will also offer our own gifts. Um, as you know, all of our uh, budget here comes from you, and so we rely on your generosity, that opening of yourselves, trusting that what you can share will join with what others share to make a difference in the world that is greater than what we can ask for or imagine. I'll post a link, there'll be a QR code. We know that some of you are doing weekly online giving. We know that some of you are mailing your checks to church. If you want to give, we will figure, we will help you find a way to give. 
And the last thing we offer to one another in this time is a sign of God's peace, to let one another know that the waves of this world are not the final thing there is, but God's peace dwelling deep within our hearts and eventually this whole universe. And each one of us reminds one another that it is that peace that we know and trust in our living. Um, and so we offer our gifts and uh, we offer the peace. The peace of God be with you all. Share a sign of peace with the people online. During this time when we must remain apart, we share this meal trusting that God's love and promises find us right where we are and that they unite us as one body across all space and time. So think about the table that you are eating from this morning as part of a much larger table, a crowded table, it is God's table, and it extends to all people and all places. And so you, no matter who you are, 
are welcome to share in this feast. There is a place for you here. If you are not sharing in this meal today, know that God is still with you. You are no less a part of God's family or our church community, and we will invite you to share and receive a blessing instead of communion. If you haven't already done so, now is the time to gather your bread or crackers and wine or grape juice or any food and drink because we have a God who chooses to give us grace through ordinary, small, humble things. But the grace we receive in this meal is extraordinary. It is God's mercy for us, God's healing in us, God's welcome to us, and God's strength within us, all through Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together as Jesus has taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thinking about this sermon this morning, communion is the small bit that God gives us that makes a big difference. It is something that we look at and say, will there be enough? But God is a God of miracles and makes the small bit of food and drink that we have into enough strength and mercy, not only for you, but for your neighbor and for this world. It's for healing, it's for strength, it's for justice. And so we share it together. Communion is a gift that we receive, and so we don't serve it to ourselves. If you are alone, hear my words proclaiming the good news to you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you are with others, serve each other using those same words. If you're not receiving communion today, bless one another with these words if you are with others, or if you're by yourself, hear them as a blessing from me. God bless you, strengthen you, and make you whole. Come, let us share the feast that makes us one. Savior and he calls bring it all to the 
The presence of Jesus surround you with grace, strengthen you, and keep you with God forever. Amen. We close with a time of prayer, and I'm actually, I gotta grab my computer for this. Hold on a sec. The reason I need my computer for this is because prayer is the job, not just of one person, it's the job of the whole church. And that means if you have a prayer to share, you get to share it. And that means if you hear another's prayer, you get to join them in it. And we trust that as we offer our, our, our prayers to God and as we join one another in prayer, that God takes that and dwells with us and something happens and we don't always know um, what it is or how it is, but so many times I'll tell you this, the prayers of one person naming something in their lives or our community or our world are exactly what is needed to be heard by someone else. And so in these mysterious ways, God uses our prayers to draw us together and then draw us out into the world. So um, y there is a, a lag in the video. And so if you wanna start typing your prayers, if you have them, go ahead and do that right now. I will say the pr first prayer and then I will respond to your prayer request that you share uh, in the comments of our, our Facebook feed. Let us pray. God, thank you for um, being a God of abundance. And when the world looks like scarcity, we ask that you would put faith in our hearts to trust that there is more than what we see and that you are able to transform the small things that we offer, the small bits of uh, grace that we are able to see and give, and use them uh, to make a big difference in the world. Call each one of us into your work, O oh God. Give us wisdom to know where you are calling us, where our voice and presence is needed, where we are meant to join with others to do your work in the world. Keep each one of us safe, O oh God, in these trying times. Heal all who are sick. Comfort all who mourn and guide all who are traveling. God, in your mercy. Okay. Um, 
Linda is uh, praying for a friend's beloved cat going missing. We pray for this cat to be found and for the difference that this cat makes in the life of her human, uh, for the, the gift of companionship with animals and for God's comfort to be made known um, in this time of um, uh, scariness. God, in your mercy. Kelly, yes, thank you for the update on your mom, your mom's chemo uh, treatment that starts tomorrow. Uh, we know you shared that she uh, has cancer. She contracted it a couple months ago. Um, and we continue to pray for you and uh, for your whole family as you make this journey together, but mainly for your mom that she gets good treatment and finds healing. God, in your mercy. Deb, amen. Prayer of thanks for my sister's recovery from COVID. Um, praise God for all of the ways that God is a healer and for the ways that health is a real gift and allows us to fully um, live out our calls in the world. God, in your mercy. Christy, pray, pray for Megan Thomas and family and the sudden loss of her 37-year husband, Mark, this week. Um, God, for the grief that Megan um, and her family are feeling um, and for um, you to give them the strength and courage they need in these days and later on lead them to peace. But for now, day by day, give them what they need and give them most of all the trust that the love that held uh, Mark in this life now holds him eternally and that they can trust in that promise God in your mercy. Oh, Deb, for the Deb's praying for the Dick Meyer family and their dog Bella, who's in her final day. Uh, yes, animals make a difference, and it, we lose something uh, when they die. And so, uh, Diane and your family, may you bless Bella and the memories that she has uh, given you and the gifts that she has brought into this world. Bless your companionship with her. Um, and may you all have peace in this day. God, in your mercy. We're praying for uh, the Cry family, but for Don and his family as they grieve the passing of Uncle Dave. Um, God, for your spirit of comfort to hold Don and his family, um, for your spirit of resurrection to hold Dave, even as it held him as he lived, now may it hold him as he rests in you. And um, may uh, Don and his family know your peace in the days ahead. God, in your mercy. Linnea is praying for positive mindsets and kind words that people can treat everyone with love and respect. Social distancing is still very hard. Yes, we need each other um, to be who we are meant to be. And when uh, our support is taken away, it can be difficult to do things like remain kind and remain respectful. And so we need to ask God for help. We need to ask for God's kindness and love to be planted deep down in our souls and also in our neighbors because everyone, everyone is walking through a lot right now and they're doing it um, without um, ideal conditions. And so um, Linnea, for your prayer to be realized in you and in our neighbors, God in your mercy. Sue is praying a prayer of gratitude for the love and support shown to her and family um, from Mount Olivet during this difficult journey with Wayne through Alzheimer's. We know that a lot of you tuned in to Wayne's funeral this past Wednesday um, and that some of the people in the pews were members of Mount Olivet and the difference that this community um, has made to uh, Sue and to Wayne while he lived and the difference that Wayne made to this community while he lived. And for us to all trust that God still draws us together and that God still calls us to support one another. And when that support happens, yes, let's give God thanks and praise. So Sue, um, continued prayers for you. Um, and may we all trust that Wayne is part of this beloved and wide communion of saints. God, in your mercy. 
Joe, grateful for time together to celebrate the Berkeley grandparents' 80th birthdays. Yes, time together feels especially sweet nowadays. And for this 80-year-old life, two of them, it sounds like, um, uh, for family and all the blessings that you have, um, God, continue to breathe your spirit on the Berkeley family and the Himmelbergs too. God, in your mercy. Mark, prayer for comfort for all as we work our way through the uncertainties of the pandemic. It does feel like we have been walking through an unlifting fog. We are not able to plan in the ways that we used to plan. We're not able to gather in the ways that we used to gather. What we need and what we are praying for is God's comfort to wrap around us and to guide our steps um, and that we might um, make our way gently with one another. God, in your mercy. Anne is praying for George Ann, who struggles with brain cancer that has spread for strength and healing as she begins radiation this week. God, send healing to George Ann. Send it in the form of uh, doctors and nurses who care, for family who walks with her, and also for physical healing in her body. Bless her now, hold her in this time of uncertainty, give her what she needs to make her way through these trying days, God in your mercy. Marsha, prayers for wisdom, strength, and compassion for education leaders as they deal with this pandemic. Yes, we know there was a big announcement this week, and we are now um, uh, knowing that a lot of school districts have a lot of decisions to make and that they'll have to monitor things um, day by day, week by week for this extra work and for what we are asking of our education leaders. God, send them wisdom and strength and compassion. Send it to us all. God, in your mercy. Ron is praying for uh, gratitude for healing for David, who returned home this week after spending, spending two months in a coma on a rest respirator with COVID-19. Sometimes we need to believe in a God of miracles and for this gift of healing for David, for this restoration of health, and for all who were God's hands and feet to him, for all who prayed for him, um, we give God thanks and praise, and we ask God's continued blessing. God, in your mercy. Rita, prayers for improved health, physical, mental, and spiritual, especially for poor and homeless, that we use COVID challenge to make needed permanent systemic changes. Indeed, we've been talking about this um, a lot. Um, this this uh, pandemic is shining a spotlight on existing inequities, ones that we failed to fix while we had time. And so there's a grace in that, and the grace is now we know, and the grace is now we get to work together to overcome them. And for God to give us all strength and courage um, to, to make those changes together. God, in your mercy. Jolyn is praying for family as they finally um, can continue the fight to overcome parental alienation that has separated father from children for almost one and a half years. This has been an ongoing prayer for you, Jolyn, and um, we um, give God thanks for your persistence and the way that you've shown up in this situation um, and for the ways that God's mercy and reconciliation is made known. We ask for forgiveness and healing in all family relationships, but especially the, the family that you're praying for, Jolyn. God, in your mercy. Amy, for those of us out of work, now that the jobs are opening again, that God will lead us to the best fit work, what he wills for us to further our faith and love for others. And yes, Am Amy, if I might add, that you may stay safe um, and that people might stay safe in the work that they are called to. Um, but also this sense that what we get paid for is sometimes an opportunity from God to announce the gospel, to be God's hands and feet, to serve others um, in, in, with words and with deeds and to strive for justice and peace. God, in your mercy. And Linda's praying a prayer of celebration for Cohen on his baptism last Sunday. We are grateful that Cohen's parents and grandparents were able to be present. 
with Pastor Joel at the church. It felt so good to be back in that space. Yes, and I will add um, uh, for Logan and Keegan as well, wonderful to be able to gather together for these promises of God made known in ordinary water and words from Jesus to come and change our lives forever. And yes, Linda, for your family, for the generations, for the love there, and also for this Mount Olivet family and the family of the whole church on earth to um, for, for and for the ways that Cohen and Logan and Keegan will give of themselves and will be shaped by God and God's promises in baptism. God, in your mercy, we close our prayers using the words of the prayer of good courage. Let us pray. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A couple announcements uh, before you are sent on your way. We are able, thanks to the hard work of the people at Habitat for Humanity to keep us safe, to join a Habitat for Humanity build this summer. August 31st and September 1st, we will be building a home in North Minneapolis, so not far um, to go from Plymouth, and um, we encourage you to sign up. You can go to uh, mopley.org, our church website, click serve, and click upcoming volunteer opportunities. I'll also post the link in the comments, but we encourage you to sign up. We are also partnering with Epiphany Episcopal Church. You might know them as the Tomato Church. They're right by the holiday on uh, Nathan Lane and Bass Lake Road, or Schmidt Lake Road, excuse me, um, and they post the poundage of tomatoes their church garden grows. They now have, they're in a high traffic area, a little free pantry that they stock with goods. And since Prism is no longer asking for our in-kind donations, if you would like to bring some shelf stable food to our church and place it in the bin by those uh, individual bathrooms. Uh, we're going to have some volunteers shuttling it over so that people can just come by and take what they need. The information on that is our website. You click serve and then you click donation drives. Finally, this Saturday, we know you've been hearing a lot about it. It's, it's time, Blues, Brews, and Barbecues, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. There is still time for you to donate uh, to this cause, and of course, to tune in. All of the money we raised goes to Prism and to Loaves and Fishes, which uh, helps our own community meal. Um, I'll, I'll post the, the link to that as well. And we, we know that you might have caught Pastor Beth um, being interviewed by local news there. And finally, we have um, on Wednesdays through August, quiet time in a sacred space. Time to come here to the church grounds. Ideally, we will be outside, bring your own lawn chair, and to dwell in scripture, to take some time uh, for prayer, including individual uh, prayer with pastors. We do ask that you sign up online and fill out a health waiver, um, and I will post the link for that as well. Thank you for joining in worship. Uh, it, it takes all of us. And I am always so heartened to think of all of you on the other end of that camera in your homes or in your cabins or sometimes even on the road um, uh, sharing in this uh, extraordinary event of God's promises coming to us again and again. So go out with this blessing. Go forth into the world with justice. Be of good courage. Hold fast that, uh, that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. And may God, source, word, and spirit be among you and remain with you always. 
Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turning into